video game trailers, Hollywood cinematics, transition effects, you name it, the sci-fi impact is everywhere. Yeah, sure, there's a few plugins specifically designed to do this and more than a handful of sample libraries out there that'll likely do the job, but the question is, how do you create these impact transitions from scratch? And that's what we're gonna explore here in today's video using Vital, a few samples, and the plugins from Blease. As you might've heard here recently, the Blease suite of plugins is an extremely powerful and useful set of instruments and effects designed to go beyond what your stock plugins can do and take your sound design and your music to the next level. So if you like this kind of video and you wanna see more sound design videos on this channel, smash that like button. And if you haven't already, you should subscribe. And if you really want to take your sound design skills and your music to the next level, check out my Patreon. There you'll find all kinds of extra tutorials, just like this one, tons of extra presets, one-on-one -on -one coaching, the sign circle, and so much more. You can join for as little as $3 a month. Check it out. Link is down below in the description. That being said, let's get into some sci-fi impacts. All right, so here we are inside of Ableton Live 11. Now, the goal with today's video is to build a sci-fi impact transitional sound from scratch using some samples and some plugins. The plugins that I'm gonna be using, number one, I'm gonna be using Vital to build sort of a kick drum style impact sound. And then I'm also gonna be using more of the Bleas suite of plugins. You guys have heard me talk about the Bleas plugins recently on this channel. They are extremely powerful, they're extremely versatile, and they really work well in a sound design context. And that's what I'm gonna showcase here today, all right? So this is the track that we're working on. And this track is from one of my upcoming live sets. And it needs a transitional element in one particular spot. So we're gonna listen to the track and then I'm going to show you guys how I'm gonna build a transitional element from scratch. Here we go. Right about here. question is, how do we build this from scratch? And that's what I'm gonna show you guys here today, all right? So the first step is, is to add a couple more MIDI tracks and audio tracks, all right? You can easily do that in Ableton just by hitting Control, Shift, T, adding a MIDI track, and then we're gonna add some audio tracks. So just Control, T, maybe like four times, because we're gonna use some samples here. All right, so now we have our MIDI track, and that's where we're gonna put Vital, and then we're gonna use samples uh, for the rest of them. But the first thing I like to focus on is the sort of buildup, because we have a couple different stages of this impact. We have the initial buildup, like, right? And then we also have the impact, which is And then we have the sort of like, you know, smacking sound of impact and maybe the tail, which can be more of like a reverb. Um, and another good option would be adding some tremolo to that. So it's right. Bunch of different ways you can do this. Uh, so um, the samples that I'm going to be using today, um, you can, are available down below. So you guys can download these samples. I'm giving them away to you. The full pack I'm going to put on my Patreon. So those of you who are subscribed to my Patreon are going to get the full pack uh, as part of your subscription, all right? One of the samples that I'm gonna be using, especially for this sort of like intro impact sort of thing, is this London construction sample that I just recently captured on my one of my recent trips to London. Um, I was just kind of walking around one evening in the city with my field recorder and I rolled up on these construction workers who were literally dumping metal into a dump truck. It was like a literal gold mine for sound design. So I just quickly pulled out my recorder and started recording. And this is what it sounds like. You can imagine as a sound designer, when you roll up on something like that, if you have a field recorder in your hand, wow, you just won the lottery. All right. So anyway, um, so we have this sample here and it's laid out on a lane and this is where on bar right at the end of um, Bar 32 bar 33. That's where I want this transitional element to go um, So what I can do is I can say all right Well, I'm gonna just sort of crop this sample where I want it. I just want say maybe a two bar um, 
build up on this on this uh, transitional element. But what I can do inside of Ableton, if you if you're not in automation mode and you don't have this sort of MIDI keyboard selected up here, which kind of lets you play um, notes with the keys, you can hit Control, Alt, and Shift at the same time, and your mouse pointer turns into a finger pointer and you enter what's called slip mode in the video editing world. I don't know what they call it in Ableton, but this is the slip editor, right? So you can sort of shift the sample around exactly where you want it. So again, if you know what you want your sample, what length you want it, and then you know sort of like roughly where it is, then you can sort of dial it in perfectly right here. All right, so what we're also gonna do is we're gonna double click the sample and then we're gonna warp it. Now, what we're gonna do is down here, we can just hit times two and now we have a halftime sample or double the length and we can change the warp mode to say repitch or maybe even complex pro, depending if we're gonna pitch shift it or not, all right? So now what I can do is I can back this up and I can say, all right, here's what we have. Cool, right? So now I can shorten that back up and I can say, all right, let's try pitch shifting it, say down an octave. Let's see how that sounds. Ooh, that might be really cool. So it kind of gave us some more harmonic content when we lowered the octave down, all right? So this is good, um, but it really needs some character and that's where the Bleas plugins come in, all right? So I'm gonna go into my plugin library and grab one of the Bleece plugins. The first one I'm gonna reach for is the Bleece Phaser. Now the Bleece Phaser, I love. I'm like, this is like the best phaser I've ever used. And I'm not just saying that, it's a really cool phaser and I'll tell you why. Uh, so I'm gonna select the default presets. This is where it all starts, right? And what you have here is two LFOs on either side. One controls the frequency or how fast that phaser is moving. The other one controls the spread, which is spreading the whole phaser out. Um, so these are really nice to have, especially when you're talking about you know phasing, you want it to kind of be in motion all the time, right? So uh, I'm gonna just kind of add some notches here and then I'm gonna add some spread, all right? And that spread is going to be modulated by the spread LFO. And as you can see, as soon as I add the amount here, um, the spread LFO starts moving. Now I can modulate the frequency and so now it's not only moving, but it's spreading out and moving back and forth. Now, when we go back to our sample, listen to how this sounds. Nice, all right? So it's sort of in time with my sample and that's close enough because these are set at a rate of two over one and that's exactly how long my sample was originally, all right? Cool, so we're gonna do some volume automation to make it sound a little better, um, but that's basically uh, the Bleece phaser. It's a really, it's just a simple but powerful phaser that you can use. Now, one of the other things that I love about the Bleece plugins is they're stackable, right? So you can start stacking these plugins up and get some really cool textures. The second one that I'm gonna add here is the Bleece chorus. So I'll put the phaser away, and now let's look at the Bleece chorus. Now the Bleece chorus uh, is a really cool chorus, it's like, exactly what you want in, in a chorus, right? So um, it has obviously depth and it has some delay lines. Also got a filter here, which is really nice. Um, and it's got width control, feedback control, all the standard things that you'd really want on a chorus. So check this out. The phaser and the chorus combined sounds like this. Right, and that's sounding even more sci-fi to me now. Um, I really like that, all right? Cool, so let's lower the, maybe just take out the low end. Nice, all right. Now the one thing that's missing from this whole equation is obviously number one, reverb, but some volume automation, all right? So let's quickly do that so we kind of get the vibe of where we're going with this. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enter automation mode in Ableton by selecting A or just hitting A on the keyboard and then selecting mixer and we're gonna go to um, track volume. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add two points right here at the front and the back. I'm gonna lower the first point all the way down. That's great, I mean, that's sort of just a standard ramp automation, right? But what if you wanna make it even fancier, okay? So all you have to do on Windows, it's Alt, on Mac, it's probably Option, just select it, and you see how the, the, the arrow pointer kinda has this little curve symbol next to it? That means that you're now entering elastic mode. So let me, I'm gonna click that. You gotta hold it down while you do this, just like that, and now we have an elastic automation line, so now, it's gonna kind of ramp up, and which is really nice. But in the context of a track, that's exactly what we'd want, all right? So let's listen to it again in the whole track context. 
Now we have. Right? Cool, I'm good with that, all right? But what we really need here is we need an impact, all right? So this is basically how to do this in Vital from scratch. And you could also apply this to sort of like how to build a kick drum. It's sort of the same thing. You want really that kind of kind of sound. How do you do that from scratch in Vital? I'm gonna show you here right now. So I'm just gonna grab, um, just select the track that I want Vital to be on and make a MIDI clip, all right? Now the note that I draw in here does not have to be specific. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you why in just a second. So just grab your pencil tool and draw any old note, and we're gonna draw this to be two bars long, okay? So now we're gonna grab Vital over here. I'm gonna grab Vital and just place it onto my MIDI lane, and now we have an instance of Vital here, okay? Let me make this a little smaller. Um, there we go, okay, perfect. So um, the first thing we're gonna do is to get that sort of smooth kick drummy sound, um, let's just select the factory library and select a sine wave, okay? Cool, we got a sine wave. Now what we're gonna do is come over here to the LFOs, all right? And in the LFOs, we're going to sort of draw a kind of rampy shape like this, all right? This is how I make all my kick drums, is I sort of just draw this like, kind of, you know, it looks like a down ramp, like a slope, but then you kind of like leave it moving like this. And what you can do here is select envelope mode. And that means it's gonna happen like once, all right? So that's cool, right? But we're not done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower the level of the oscillator all the way down. And we're gonna tie this LFO over to the level. Great, so now what's happening is, is the LFO is now controlling the level of this oscillator, all right? We're also gonna come over to the advanced tab and turn off note tracking, okay? That's why it doesn't matter what note that we used inside of the MIDI lane because note tracking is now off. And now the note is controlled exclusively by this pitch uh, modulation up here. So what we're also gonna do is use the same LFO. We're gonna grab that and select the pitch. Now this is gonna be where we kind of dial in the sound of that sine wave. So check this out. Listen to what this sounds like on its own. I'm just gonna hit solo here and hit play, right? Cool. That sounds like kind of like a laser gong or something, right? But what happens if we select hold shift and pitch it down two octaves? Now listen. Ooh, right? So that's a lot more like impacty. Now, what if you wanted that to last a little longer? All you have to do is select the time value and say maybe one over one. So now it's a full bar, right? Cool. Okay, now what you can also do is you can lengthen out this curve if you want to kind of say, oh yeah, right? And you can dial in the amount of how much with that transpose modulation, okay? So you really have a lot of creative freedom here as far as how that impact sounds, uh, right? That's kind of nice. So you can kind of get the different lengths because what it's doing is it's ramping down that pitch ever so slightly. I think I'm good with that, right? Let's maybe a little faster. There we go. Go like this. Yeah. Cool. Nice. So that's a nice impact sound, all right? So now what we have is we have, let's just solo both of these. Okay, I might want it a little longer. You can also add a compressor to that, just like you would a kick drum. So let's come over here to the effects and we'll add a compressor um, and we will shorten the attack. Cool, awesome. So nothing fancy here. I mean, it's just a straight impact sound, right? All right, cool. So we've done that, um, but now let's start adding like a smack and the tail to this impact sound. So I'm gonna open up these lanes of audio and I'm gonna grab some samples. Again, these samples you can download in the description box down below, all right? So the first one I'm gonna add is this sample called Nails. And this is gonna be really cool because this is like kind of like a, you know, sprinkling, I was literally just sprinkling nails on my garage floor. Listen to this one. All right, that could be really nice. We could also, uh, if we wanted to, we could uh, warp that and double the length. Right, so we could, that works for me, okay. We can just go select repitch. Right, there we go, all right. So the warp modes do matter and they give you different effects. So be sure that right underneath that warp button, you can kind of experiment with the different warp modes and find out which one works best for you. You can also use it um, in different contexts with the octaves and repitching it, all right. So now let's grab some, uh, I don't know, something else, like a box close. This might be nice. So again, we can enter um, slip mode here. So we can sort of zoom in and turn off the fixed grid and we'll turn off the fixed grid. So we can move this into place and then we're gonna select this box clamp. Nice, 
All right. So that's just maybe I think I got some coins in a wood box and I just close it real quick. And then we're going to add maybe some of these pins or a clamp. Ooh, yeah, that clamp. Okay, cool. Um, what we can do with the clamp, because it's a clamp on, we can clamp off by reversing it. So let's reverse the clamp. And we're gonna select that and put that into context right there. Cool, now we have a clamp. Nice. Very good. Ooh, that's kind of drama. I like that, how it just kind of, right? The spring, the reverb from the spring, I like that. Ooh, let's select warp and let's double the length of that. There we go. Nice. All right, cool. And now let's do like one more. We'll do say this, um, one of these shakers. Okay, let's select a shaker. That's the one I wanted. All right, so let's select the shaker and we're gonna reverse this sample. So we'll just reverse it real quick. And then we're going to, let's re-pitch it or do complex pro. We're gonna pitch it up like say an octave. Okay, and we're gonna listen to it. Nice, excellent. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all of these samples and we're gonna group them by holding down shift and then saying right click and group tracks. Now we have a group of these tracks. Now the reason why you group these tracks is so you can add some more effects on top of these, right? So what we're gonna do is I'm going to grab another one of the Blease plugins, and I'm gonna grab the reverb and put it onto the entire group. So now we have um, the Blease reverb on this entire group of tracks, right? What I can do with the Blease reverb is I can group that, and so now we're grouping on top of the group, and we can add another chain, just like I showed in the video uh, on the channel uh, just the other day. So now we have the wet, train, the wet chain and the dry chain. And now what we can do is we can lower the dry chain down and now we have just that wet chain coming through. Okay, cool. You can hear that. Nice. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so one more thing I'd like to add to that is probably like a delay. So we can, on our, on our wet chain, we can add a delay here and just add a delay, right? That's nice, okay, cool. Excellent, we can add some more feedback to that, lower it down. Um, no, we're not gonna play with the shifter here, but we can sort of do like, yeah, 3 16 perfect. We can add some ping pong. And then the last one we're gonna use, we're gonna use the dragonfly, all right? The Bleas dragonfly is like a really cool, tremolo style, you know what I'm saying? To really get some, like, on that tail, we're really gonna start playing with it. So here we go. Nice. Ooh, I love that. Oh my gosh, that's really good. Right? Okay, cool. So now one thing we did not do is we did not adjust the reverb, all right? So let's come over here to the Bleach Reverb. We're gonna increase the length, decrease the room size, add a filter to it, up the dry wet to 100%, and now listen to this. Mm. Excellent. You see? That's all it is. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I truly appreciate it. If you want to learn more and you want the full pack from the samples that I showed on today's video, check out my Patreon. There you'll find tons of presets for all these synthesizers that I've designed for. You'll find more tutorials just like this one, the Science Circle, one-on-one -on -one ambient coaching, and so much more. You can join for as little as $3 a month. But like I said, hopefully, seeing me do this one way can influence you guys and you guys have the confidence to go and do it your own way. So, my name is Chris from Signs of Life. Again, thank you all for watching. Happy music making. And as always, keep your heads in the clouds and your feet planted firmly on the ground.
Take good care, y'all. I'll see you all in the next one.